Welcome back. I'm starting with our first segment of today. As we mentioned, we have very special celebrations for Christmas today on the 7th of January. And over the phone, we have with us Dr. Vivian Moros from London. We will talk to her more about celebrations of the Christmas here in Egypt and, of course, how it is unique and different from other countries. Hello? Hello. Good morning. Nashua. Good morning, Dr. Good morning. Vivian. First of all, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thank you, and Merry Christmas to you, uh, Night TV, and all the Egyptians, and to our president who greeted us. We greet him back. Uh, uh, thank you very much for his greeting, and we greet him back, who give long health and uh, longevity for his life. Dr. Viviano, we're talking about um, how the celebration in Egypt, of course, is unique and different. And I know that, of course, in London now, it is very challenging. Um, so first, I would like to know more about how it, does it differ, the celebration in Egypt, and how are you celebrating abroad? Well, we usually when we are abroad, we celebrate uh, the normal way we used to celebrate in Egypt because we are very traditional and we like our culture. We want to transmit it to our children despite being abroad and far away from home, but we transmit our tradition in every way to our children so they can keep it with our children and that goes on and that's how civilizations are made and, uh, and living uh, across the years. So we, we try and do that as much as possible with all the rituals of Egypt. Uh, now, uh, uh, in Egypt, of course, we have a lot of uh, advantages of being next to all our friends and family and neighbors and all the love that surrounds us and all Egyptians. We celebrate in one spirit, uh, all Egypt celebrates in one spirit, and you feel the festivity everywhere around you. But, of course, in, uh, in London, like everywhere in, uh, in any foreign countries, because of the difference of the calendars, the celebration, the main celebration is the 25th of December. But, and, of course, you, you don't have your neighbors like you have in Egypt and all that, but as I said, we try to keep the tradition. And uh, especially uh, this year is a very, very, very difficult year in the UK. Of course, it's difficult as well in Egypt, but in the UK, uh, there are very strict rules of uh, national lockdown that uh, prevents people from meeting as well. And uh, churches from functioning normally only with the priests and very few uh, members of the Christian uh, family. So we have to do with that. We follow that online or on TV, and uh, that's how we continue living our normal life despite the conditions. So, of course, this year is a very difficult year, and everybody is praying, Christian and Muslim, all over the world, asking God to take away this terrible, terrible uh, pandemic uh, that is threatening the whole population all over the world. Dr. Vivian, yes. what can you tell us about this very special day? Well, when you celebrate the birth of Jesus, of course, the birth of Jesus has made a tremendous change in, in the life of humanity since his birth. And the struggle that ha happened as well for all uh, the Christians all over the world to become Christian and to stay Christian because they were opposed by a lot of uh, other believers or non-believers at that time. So the birth of Jesus created a new hope for life. And Jesus as his uh, emblem and symbol is love and forgiveness. So to give love and forgiveness even to those who hate you is, is a big strength and uh, actually it shows how uh, the world should be. It's not by fighting and by killing that you will win, it's by being peaceful on the long term. The love and peace will prevail and will win any, any bad thing around you. So it gives you a lot of uh, control of your bad feelings to transform it into good feelings. So for us, it's, it's a big sacrifice when you are very, very uh, nervous. You can answer in a very bad way, but you try. 
and to be calm and take the thing in the opposite way and return the bad with good. And uh, and it's a good quality for all humanity, not just Christians. But, uh, of course, we do follow it more because of the path of, of Christ. Uh, we see as well through the life of Christ along uh, his uh, path, the 33 years of his life, he had a lot of temptation from evil, from bad people, and he never opposed that. He went on through with patience and love, and he saved us all by his death and his crucifixion and his resurrection. So it means a lot to Christians. Jesus is a life-transforming thing and a main issue for our lives. So, so it's a way of living and existing. Of course, um, during such a very special um, event, Definitely, uh, you have some side talks with the children as well, and talking up with the new generation to come. What? Uh, tell us more about how do the kids can celebrate and still enjoy uh, the festivity of this important day? Well, of course, when uh, when you have children, uh, of course, in Egypt you have a lot of facilities of uh, being in constant touch with. Uh, people of your faith, of Coptic Orthodox, and you see, you go to churches, you can go every day, you can see uh, your neighbors, you can see your friends, and you have a different life, because you have, you, for instance, you are living in a flat, you, half of it are Christian, half of it are Muslim, you, you live a certain peace between both of you, and you don't see any difference between religions. And that's a way of, of having a religion, loving each other, is part of the Islam, it's part of Christianity. So you live that. We miss that here because you don't have the same uh, exchange with either your neighbor or, or you don't find the Muslim, the type of Muslim that you find in Egypt because they're not your neighbor. You cannot find them easily here. You don't, you don't live, especially uh, next to someone because you don't know. You just live in a place and you don't know who's surrounding you. So there is a way of social living that you miss here, but we try and teach it by giving our children and their grand, uh, our grandchildren a lot of love. You know, when you are abroad, you are closer to your children than when you are in Egypt, because in Egypt, you, they have their friends, they go out, they see the neighbor and everything. But here you are all these people all together. So everything you do, you have to do it in a way of you are an idol. You teach them a lot, well, either with words or without words. Sometimes, of course, we teach them the story of Jesus. We teach them that all these, they see all our friends who are Muslim here, they know that there is no difference. There is no difference between uh, uh, religion. There is no difference between color. There is no difference between any people except the love that exists between them. So we try and teach them with real lessons. And uh, even my children that I taught them, they are teaching their children what I taught them. So it's the family in abroad is very important, and family values are very, very important that you have to pass to your children, that, and that's how it's kept. Uh, the identity is part of your identity, because despite we are away, and even if we go to Egypt once or twice, we try to keep our Egyptian identity. So it's, it's something that you cannot really explain, and it's something that's within you and that you transmit it to, to your family unconsciously and consciously. So it's, it's beautiful, and it gives a lot of joy because you get closer to your children than ever uh, anywhere if you are in Egypt. Dr. Uh, Vivian Moros, um, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, of course. Wish you all the best. Very special thanks to our guest uh, over the phone from London, Dr. Vivian Moros. So uh, right now, moving on to a short break, then we'll be back with more on The Breakfast Show.